Hey, how's it going, everyone? I know I haven't released in the past couple of weeks, um, mainly because my two boys were sick uh, pretty bad with some uh, cold that they got, and one of them had experienced a little bit of pneumonia. Uh, but nonetheless, now they're doing a lot better, and uh, I have the free time to go ahead and start creating a little bit more content. So today we're going to be working on this Nintendo GameCube, and this one is having issues where uh, the reader just doesn't work. So it's not reading the game discs and what I'm going to end up doing is showing you how I actually fix these now. In one of the previous videos I went ahead and adjusted uh, one of the potentiometers that uh, strengthens the laser on the disc reader but today I'm going to actually show the replacement of all the capacitors that will be a better fix uh, down the road. And so let's go ahead and get started. So first let's start with showing the issue. So you can see there that I wasn't able to get it working. So we're gonna go ahead and start working on the fix. Let me go ahead, power this off and unplug all the cables and let's get started. So for this, you really just need two types of bits. You need this Phillips one right here and it's a size one and you can also use a size two for some of the bigger screws. And then you have this security bit that's uh, used for the Nintendo consoles. And these are just mainly used for these four screws. After that, it's just the Phillips. So let's open this up. Once the four screws are removed, just simply lift the case. So just by looking at this, it looks like someone already tried to mess with it. How I can tell is by these screws completely missing. So I'm probably gonna have to order a, a set, but that doesn't stop us from working on this. Um, yeah, it looks like they removed all the screws, but I can still talk through some of these things. So normally I remove this back cap here and then there would be two screws that are located here and right here on this fan. So this would come off next. So you can see that that's off. There's also supposed to be four screws located in the front. Let me go ahead and put some light on that. Let me move it. So they would be here, these two, and then these two. So those would be the four. So at this point, I can assume that they took all the screws and nothing is screwed in. And let's see this one. And it is not screwed either. Normally, this is screwed onto the shielding. But um, I guess we're just going to go ahead and skip that step and start working on this disc. So let me move everything to the side since we're not going to use it for now. So unfortunately they removed all the screws and I wasn't able to show the process as to um, what to do in case anyone's out there trying to follow step by step. But I do have a previous video where I did adjust the potentiometer that does go through all those steps. And there's also documentation. I think even I fix it or some other YouTube videos can also have that. So it's not too difficult to remove all those screws. But once we have this, the first thing I'm going to do is check the potentiometer's reading on here. And what we want to do is um, see kind of where we're at. That way, when we finish the capacitor fix, we're going to go ahead and adjust that to uh, some of the normal factory ranges. Now, I think this one was a, a Dole 001. Let me go ahead and check. So yeah, just as I suspected, this is a Dole 001. In case you're wondering what GameCube you have, it's just located on the bottom on the sticker. And uh, the reason why this is important is because there's really just two models, a Dole 001 and a Dole 101. Um, and really it's just to determine the factory default ranges. And for the Dole 001, it's between uh, 450 and 600 ohms. And the Dole 101 is 150 to 250 ohms. So we're gonna go based on the 450 to 600 and let's see where we're at now. So I got my multimeter here and what I'm gonna do is put it on resistance mode. And that's this one right here, this Omega sign. And we're gonna put the black lead on this bottom pin down here and this red one on the top pin. And let's see what reading we get. All right, so we get 189 ohms. Uh, so that's definitely far from 450 and 600. So I'll go ahead and adjust this after I'm done, but let's go ahead and get it fixed. So let's take this apart. Let me show you those steps. So there are four screws that are located on this board. So there's this one, two, three, and four, and then these two cables that you have to remove. So let's go ahead and move those four and those two ribbons or those two cables. All right, so we removed all the screws. Let's take this cable out right here. It's pretty easy. Just gonna go ahead and pull this out. There we go. And then we're gonna get this one out next. It's a little tougher.
So I did say it was two cables, but I forgot about this third cable and that's my fault. So the way I take this one out, it's a little strange. So I try to lift the board out like this. So you'll see just kind of how I do it. And the reason why is because if I try to remove it from here where I pull it out, I noticed that in the past I bend it too much. So what I like to do is just simply remove the, the board out and it's kind of awkward. But the thing that keeps it held down in place is this little plastic piece right here. But I still lift it up. There you go. You see it came off. And then after that, the next step is real simple. Just turn it this way and then just pull it out. Just hold on to the cable a little bit and then just pull it. There you go. Comes out nice and easy. So we have all the capacitors that are located in the bottom of the board. We're going to go ahead and replace them all. Um, I don't know which one specifically is the one causing problems, but normally it's down here somewhere. And what I like to do is just replace all of them because uh, why not? I mean, let's just fix all of them. It's, it's really not that bad and they get a fresh set of capacitors. So these are the ones that I bought. These are from console five and they have the replacement on um, these capacitors. And it seems to have worked for a lot of the GameCube readers that I have worked on the past instead of just doing the potentiometer fix. And this is really honestly a better long-term fix than, you know, just adjusting that laser reader. So let's go ahead and get the hot air station ready and we'll start working on this. So one thing I did forget to mention before I get started is that we have to match the polarity. So you can see that black is the negative side. So when you're matching these up as well as the capacitance, so you see here that it has like, for example, the 220 and the four volt, um, that we're matching them up with what came in the packaging and we replace these accordingly. So just uh, be sure you're uh, aware of that and uh, don't mix anything up and we should be good. So let's go ahead and get started now.
we were able to get everything and everything seems to look good. So let's go ahead and reassemble and test it out. So we're going to start by just simply putting this over back to where it was and then just simply putting this first cable in. So let me zoom in on that. Let me just push on both sides with even pressure, not too hard. Should just slide in. And there we go. All right, and then this next one, we just put it inside. There we go. Seems to be going in. There we go. And then just make sure to close it. So just secure it. And it's on there. And this next one over here is pretty simple. Just put it through this little groove here and then just connect it. Let's go ahead and connect it. Just push it in. And that's it. So before I screw everything back on, I'm just going to go ahead and test it. But first, I want to go ahead and adjust that potentiometer. And we're going to go ahead and start it at around, let's just do 550 and then see if it works from there. And uh, I'm going to turn it clockwise. That way I can essentially increase the resistance and try to get there. So we were at 189. And now let's uh, go ahead and turn it clockwise. Go ahead and turn it too much. Get a different angle here so you can see. Okay, so we're at roughly a 270. So let's go a little higher. So 608, I'm gonna just lower it just a bit. So it's at 500 ohms, um, roughly 515. I think we can work with that. That's not too bad. So let's go ahead and test it out on the system and see if it's working. Now, in order to test this, there are these two little buttons right here. You're gonna have to push them going that way. So you push and hold them down and then you just push the power button. And there we go, it works. Uh, let me go ahead and turn it so you can see. And you can see there that we have, have it reading the disc. So it looks like that fixed it. And as you saw, we were at 189 ohms and we pushed it up to around 515 within the factory range. And this seems to have fixed it. Let me go ahead and turn it off. Let's go ahead and connect the controller. So we're gonna go ahead and put it in the first port and test it out. So it looks like everything seems to be working just fine. So that's good. So I think we can say that this GameCube is fixed. So a lot of people wonder why they do the potentiometer fix. And the truth is that not everybody has a hot air station or the tools that are required or soldering irons to Go ahead and replace capacitors so a lot of the times it's just really an easy fix to get a very cheap bit to open the gamecube and then everyone seems to have like a phillips screw around so a lot of the times it's a lot easier to just adjust it without having to do any of that other additional work and uh, replacing all the caps so that's why you'll see a lot of people online um, suggesting that as kind of like a first level fix but the true fix is to simply replace all the capacitors this is a long-term better fix and as you can see that we adjusted it and increased the resistance of that uh, potentiometer for the disc reader and put it back within uh, normal ranges and you can see that the game was able to uh, be read again if you like today's video please be sure to hit that like button and if you're new to the channel please be sure to hit that subscribe button i want to thank you all for supporting this channel thank you all for watching i'll catch you all next time